Welcome gaming friends. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Guild Wars 2 and World vs. World. We're specifically going to be taking a look at the fight guilds in Guild Wars 2 World vs. World, and we're going to be taking a look at one specific strategy. That specific strategy is going to be the melee ball comp, and we're going to talk about ways that you can increase your performance inside those types of groups. We're going to be taking a look at some of my footage, and I'm going to give you some commentary on what's going right inside these clips, what's going wrong inside of these clips, and what I can do to improve those situations. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, as we're getting ready for this clip review, let's go ahead and take a look at the rules of the melee zerg or the ball composition. First of all, stay on the tag at all times, even if you are squishy. If you have to be off the tag, it is better to be slightly behind the tag than ahead of the tag. Listen to the tag at all times, regardless of whether you think that means you're going to die or not. Avoid traveling in straight lines at large enemy forces. Strafe and dodge are going to be your best friends. Backpedaling is one of the worst movements that you can make. There are some places where it will be strategic, but generally a pretty bad idea. If you have to go through a large enemy bomb, it is always best to be dodging. Stability and barrier are going to be your best friends. Bring at least one stun break or stability skill in every build that you ever take. Don't try to do your own thing, and please, 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 if you're going to play full glass cannon, it is not recommended A for beginners, and also you do not want to be doing it if you do not have a good set of support classes inside your subgroup, and positioning is absolutely optimal, otherwise you are going to be playing the downstate meta. So let's go ahead and take a look at these clips. All right, for this first clip, this is a continuation of the rolling footage that we had while we were talking about the Zerg rules. As you can see here, we are already mid-fight, and I get caught inside this bubble. Unfortunately, I didn't notice uh, Nick blink out of the situation, so as the supports are pulling out in full run and I'm backpedaling, the Zerg is able to close that gap and then go ahead, and put me into downstate, and finish me off. Got a couple more clips here for... Uh, range DPS or Scourge, and then I'm going to switch over to a couple different roles. As you can see here inside this fight, I'm doing a pretty decent job of staying on tag and making sure that Nick remains between me and the enemy Zerg. As I'm getting damage going through some of these bombs, my supports are able to keep me up and uh, fully healed up. And then as we roll on here, you're going to notice that an enemy bubble gets popped right here. And a lot of the group sits in it for a while, unfortunately, and um, start to get a few downs here. So as that's happening, our lower subgroups are starting to get peeled away. And we continue to fight here and work our way back into the gate as we're down to the first few subgroups and go ahead and pull out of this fight and wait for a respawn. Next, we have a clip here where we're fighting actually inside the Lord Room, and since this fight is going to be taking place in a much more constricted area, we're going to have to make sure that we stay much tighter because the bombs are going to be so much more focused. As you can see here, Enemy Zerg gets a uh, good bubble off here, and we are able to sustain that because we're so close together, and then we are able to counter bomb really well with our melee composition. And then as the enemy Zerg pushes back to the clockwise direction, we follow them. And then they rotate back here, and then we are going to be re-engaging with them. And then they are trying to pull out through the hallway. As I'm going out through the hallway, I'm making sure I'm dropping as much damage as humanly possible here to catch any of the stragglers. I do get downstated here. Nick is able to quickly put an illusionary life on me since I was right on top of tag. And then we are able to continue the fight and continue to stay right on top of the remnants of their core that was remaining. And at this point, we are pretty much into cleanup mode. And as you can see where I'm staying closer to the tag here, I am able to get much better um, strips from the enemies as well as I didn't quite hit damage on this one, but did in the last clip. All right, so we're going to switch over to support here. I am on support firebrand. And as you can see, I got to make sure I stay in extra close to Nick. I got CC'd here and got off of tag, but I am able to recover using my Aegis and my stability skills. And then we are able to get back onto tag and keep everyone in the party upright. Get a little bit of separation here, a little less punishing on a support firebrand since you have so much access to stability. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure you're staying close because everyone else is counting on you and 
as I did do, did do that, you did notice the engineer in my party did go to downstate, so I probably wasn't close enough to provide them the moons that they needed. So staying a little bit closer in this fight would have definitely been much more optimal. Big gravity well here. That was a really good bomb by the enemy Zerg, and we are starting to get uh, pushed out at this point since they were able to CC chain a large chunk of our group there. All right, and for this final clip here on Support Firebrand before we switch over to melee DPS on Dragon Hunter, as you can see, this we had a few uh, runs in with us at this point where we were able to get much closer into our uh, rhythm here, and the group is much tighter. Guys that are in the back line are definitely still getting picked off, but as far as the large majority of the squad, we're staying pretty tight. Uh, boons are decent here. Uh, we do stay in this bubble a tad long. Nick gets us kited back out of that, and then we're able to re-engage and onto the core of the enemy Zerg. One of the good things that you can see here is most of the people inside the sub squad do have stability a large chunk of the time, or at least Aegis. And we're able to stay right on top of the enemy group's core and uh, wear them down. All right, so here's our first encounter on uh, melee DPS. As you can see, I got to make sure I stay really tight on Nick here uh, because I am playing full berserker on my dragon hunter here. So getting caught out of position and not having a chance to hit one of my invulnerabilities is absolutely going to kill me. So I'll use my first invulnerability here when we hit the bubbles because I know I'm going to be extremely susceptible there. And as you can see, staying directly on top of Nick, my um, life bar very seldom moves here good uh barrier here for my support classes which allows me to uh, be able to play on the more aggressive side and as we cleave out these downs we're then able to uh, push down onto the remainder of the court at this point with very little threat left from the enemy team all right final fight before we wrap things up here we're outside smc again and uh, this is definitely going to be a little more of a place where we have room for error and a little bit of uh terrain that can catch you up with the uh, tree and the cloaking waters here so you have to be careful of that uh so as we're going in here as you notice i have both of my invulnerabilities up right now so i know i can be a little more aggressive i don't necessarily want to get caught too far off tag i have to burn my first invulnerability here while i'm in the middle of an enemy bomb and off of the tag and i just go through a bubble here and um almost get caught out so i'm going to be using the uh, second invulnerability here a little bit sooner than i would typically like to use that so i'm gonna have to be a lot more cautious on any further pushes and make sure that i'm staying very close to nick at this point definitely within range of my f2 to reposition myself back onto the group i do get caught out here but am able to rally and then I need to make sure I'm working my way back onto the group. Now that we're back uh, centered up here, I did just use the shelter uh, to work my way back. I'm going to have to be uh, staying on top of Nick here. Otherwise, I'm definitely going to be hitting downstate again. So uh, as we are being pushed back here, I'm staying behind Nick. And then as I see he got behind me, I did do a full turn to make sure instead of doing a backpedal to make sure that I was able to stay ahead of the advancing enemy now we're getting ready to counter push again here as we were able to reball back up and we hit the core pretty hard at this point the enemy team is getting ready to break as long as we get a handful more downs able to get that great sword to spin off right here and that uh definitely is going to bring them into break mode and i'm just going to push through since i know i have my invulnerability and they're basically in full retreat at this point with a lot of support at my backside Reposition myself back onto the group here as I am currently out of vulnerabilities again as we do our chase down and end this fight wrapped it up. Thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you found this guide helpful. If you did, please consider leaving a like and a comment to help out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribing to help support future content. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below along with any tips that I may have missed in this video. Hopefully you all having a great one and we'll catch you next time.